You see, they're towing and suspension products everywhere. And this week, we bring back the story, Inside Roadmaster, Inc. David Robinson, vice president of the company, gives us a behind-the-scenes tour of Roadmaster and shows us what's involved in making their highly respected line of products that proudly carry that Made in America sticker. Then, on Paws On Board, Dr. Fitz explains to us why it's so important to have your pet properly ID'd and the various types of IDs that are available. This is especially important if your pet travels with you around the country. Later, Kate Dunbar, our campground gourmet, shows us how relatively easy it is to prepare a delicious cedar plank salmon dish. Once you see how easy this meal is to cook up, I'm sure you'll be adding this to your regular campground menu. These stories and more, plus our Go Power Get Power Up contest on this week's RV Today TV. Hi, my name is David Robinson. I'm the marketing manager here at Roadmaster, and we're about to take a factory tour. Before we get started, I just wanted to mention a couple of things that kind of set Roadmaster apart. The biggest thing is, is that we are a true manufacturer. We literally take raw steel and turn it into finished product. There's uh, a lot of companies out there that call themselves manufacturers, but uh, essentially they're assembly shops. They bring in parts from overseas, they put them in a box, bolt it together, and they call that manufacturing. We literally make the parts that make the assemblies that turn into finished goods. The other thing is, is that Roadmaster is really big on testing. As you go through, you'll see a lot of testing that we do. It's stuff that uh, other people uh, might do one in 100 or one in 50. Uh, we do one for one. Every part that comes out of here gets tested. Let me just show you a little bit of our raw material. This is how it comes in. It usually comes in in 12, 20, or 40 foot lengths of steel or aluminum or brass. From that, we uh, put it through our turning centers, uh, our saws to cut it down to size, and we start turning it into pieces. Come on and let's go take a look. So one of the first things that we do is we take our long lengths of steel and we cut it down to size. So typically we will take several layers of steel, weld them together so that they don't shift, and we'll bundle cut them. We'll program the machine to tell it how long of a piece that needs to be cut, and then it will swath through, it'll cut through all layers of the steel. It will automatically raise itself back up. It'll grab a hold of the steel and it'll pull it through to the correct length and then start all over again. All we have to do is have somebody on the end of the line pulling the cut parts off. So the parts that we're cutting right now are actually the collars that will go around a two inch receiver tube. We make a lot of drop hitches and hitch accessories. So this collar will literally be welded around a normal receiver. Here at Roadmaster, not only do we manufacture steel products, but we also design and engineer them. Currently, we're back here in our R&D department. This is where we bring in cars and motorhomes, and we'll literally create the brackets or the sway bars, steering stabilizers, whatever bracketry or steel is necessary to fit a particular vehicle. So in this particular case, we've got the bumper face off the front of the car, and we will be designing the brackets and the framework that will be required to have a proper, secure, and safe attachment for a tow bar. Now, after it's been designed, they'll take it into our uh, FEA office, that's a finite elemental analysis, and what we're doing there is we're drawing it up and we're actually computer testing it to make sure that there's no hot spots or any areas that might need reinforcement or gussets. Uh, if so, we will add those parts, and uh, once we have a, a product that we feel comfortable with, then we'll go ahead and design a finished good, check for fit, check to make sure that everything goes on and off properly. In a nutshell, a very simplified version of how we design brackets for our, tow bar, for our tow bars. In the case of this particular car, the reason it's in here is we're making a new version of our brackets. We've actually had a, a bracket to fit this year of a vehicle for a long time. But in the last couple of years, we've designed a new style of bracket that customers really appreciate. It's very hidden. Uh, it has safety cable attachments on it. It has mounting brackets that you can hook up your electrical connector to, a place for your breakaway switch if you have a braking system. So what we've done is brought this back in so that we can redesign a whole new bracket in the improved version. So this is a pile of scrap metal. This is what's left over after we either plasma cut or laser cut steel parts out of it. You'll notice that there's very little waste and a lot of that is due to computer programming. Our laser tables are smart enough to find out where the holes are gonna be, where the wasted patterns are, are gonna be found, and it will recommend small parts that we could use to fill in those holes. 
Also, the computer will actually tell you the most efficient pattern to cut. So it will lay out, you just tell it how many parts you want to build and of what part number. It'll computer generate it onto the sheet and then it will go back and fill in to maximize the space as well as to recommend possible smaller parts that can consume the remaining material. Aquacam Tossins, so fast and easy to use, it could seem like a game. Aquacam, the most powerful odor control available and the number one seller for over 50 years. Want more RVing today? Then visit RVingToday.tv. Besides our weekly show and extended segments, you'll find additional stories and videos along with insightful information on what's new and what's happening around the world in RVing. From luxury RVs to unique camper vans, and from RVing with pets to RVing with kids, you'll find it all and more in RVingToday.tv. So this is an example of a jig. A jig is essentially a pattern that will allow us to replicate a piece of steel on an assembly over and over again. Essentially, it's like a jigsaw puzzle, and it will hold all of the individual pieces and parts of steel in place so that we can tack weld them. What I want to point out here is, is that every time a car changes, we have to make a new jig. So Roadmaster has over 1,200 unique jigs just for brackets. This is just to adapt tow bars to cars. And those 1,200 jigs will allow us to fit approximately 2,000 different years, makes, and models of vehicles. This is an example of one of our newer styles of brackets. And with this bracket, we have a rotating arm and that assembly can be twisted and removed easily so that when you're not towing, there's nothing visible on the front of the car. Also, these are the mounting posts where the electrical socket will attach. This is the bracket where your breakaway switch will mount. And then also out here is where your safety cables are gonna attach. So it's a very well thought out design so everything's clean and mostly invisible when you're not towing. A lot of people don't realize that Roadmaster makes a lot of things unrelated to the RV industry. For example, what you're looking at right now is a screen that separates a criminal from a police officer. This is actually the shield that goes between the front seat and the back seat of a police car. This is our bead blaster. So essentially, you'll see this tree will hang the raw steel parts on it. It replaces a sand blaster. Uh, there's four motors on the side. It's kicking a, a steel shot. It's like a huge pinball machine in there. And what it's doing is it's knocking all the mill scale off. And the reason we do that is to get a good powder coat, to get a good finish on it. This is a stamping die. And these are actually like the giant cookie cutters that will chomp pieces of steel out one after the other after the other. This whole area of our factory, everything in here, is something that most factories don't have. Normally when you want a stamping die, you'll create a drawing, you'll send it to an outside company, and they will create tool steel, create these stamping dies. Might take six, eight weeks, maybe 12. Might be 10, 20, $30,000 later. Then you can start stamping out parts. Roadmaster actually has the machinery to cut the die steel which is so hard you can't file on it. So we make our own stamping dies, and what that allows us to do is make changes to our parts faster. We don't have to wait the three or four months to have them, and it reduces the cost of creating each stamping die by significant margin. Roadmaster has 21 welding booths. Um, we also do heliarc welding, so we weld aluminum as well. But uh, the ventilation does a great job of drawing up um, all of the fumes. So we have a very clean, nice work environment here. Uh, we've got some of the best welders in the industry, uh, and that enables us to have some of the strongest products made. This is an example of a CNC turning center. Um, essentially, we chuck up long uh, sticks of steel, and we turn them down into finished parts. Uh, for example, the part you're seeing here will end up being the stinger bolt that will go inside of a tow bar. These CNC turning centers, we have over a dozen of them in the factory. Uh, each of them is a fairly major investment, but it's another example of how far Roadmaster has gone to make sure that we can control the quality and make sure that we can produce the parts that we need in the time frame that we need them. Besides tow bars, Roadmaster makes a lot of suspension products. So we make rear sway bars, front sway bars, we make steering stabilizers, we make front and rear track bars. So Roadmaster makes all of the different products that are necessary and useful to help make the coach go down the road uh, in a safer and more stable fashion. There's a big rig myth in the industry that, well, it's a big rig, it's got to handle like a big truck. 
and it really doesn't. Uh, we make the products that will make it handle much more like your car does. Uh, so uh, whether uh, we're manufacturing it for the OEMs or for the aftermarket or for some private label customers, these are some examples of different sway bars that we make. You'll notice some very involved bends. We have computerized bending equipment so that we get precisely the same bend each time. Uh, just another example of things we do outside of the traditional tow bar channel. So we've seen a number of parts being cut, we've seen some things being laid, we've seen some parts being turned. So whatever the part is, at some point uh, it'll come to this area. This is our assembly area. This is where everything gets bolted uh, or put together, instructions get added, parts get boxed, protection gets put in the box for shipping, and it gets sealed up and then sent over to our warehouse for shipping. In this part of the plant, this is where we manufacture our braking systems. So we have uh, what we call Invisibrake, an invisible braking system. We have brake in the box systems like uh, the even brake, and we have our pneumatic air braking systems that work very well with air brake coaches called the Brake Master. Uh, in addition to the, the braking systems, we also manufacture our diodes, we manufacture our tail light wiring converters, uh, our power cords. Um, some of our safety cables. Uh, all the packaging uh, occurs up here and that's kind of unique. Uh, a lot of companies send parts out to be packaged elsewhere. Um, we do that. We do blister packing here, clamshell packaging. Uh, the other thing that we do is uh, sewing. Uh, we have our own sewing department. Um, you know, those are all things that we could have done you know, overseas uh, for a lot less money, but uh, we like to keep the work here. We like to keep the uh, American workers employed. Uh, and it also allows us to control both the, the quality um, and, and the quantity. And uh, the owner of our company uh, says quite often uh, you can't um, you can't tack quality on at the end. You have to build it in. And so we like to take control of the entire process from the very beginning, where we actually take raw steel and raw parts all the way to the end, where we actually package it, paint it, package it, and put it into retail boxes. Well, that about wraps it up for our factory tour. I uh, want to thank you for your time. If you ever need uh, anything from Roadmaster, you can reach us at 800-669-9690 or roadmasterinc.com. Uh, we very much appreciate and value our customers. Off the road adventure camping to luxurious full time RVing and everything in between, Forest River has the RV to fit your needs, budget, and outdoor lifestyle. To see our full line of trailers and motorhomes, visit ForestRiverInc.com. Forest River, begin the journey. Pause on Board is brought to you by Jones Natural Chews, American sourced and made in America. Welcome to RVing Today's Pause on Board. I'm Dr. Fitz and this is Sully. Today we're going to be discussing identification, specifically what types of ID are available for dogs and how they can help to reunite pets with their owners. I've said this before on Pause on Board and I'll say it again. Every dog should have some form of ID on them. This is invaluable in the event that your dog slips their harness or collar or decides to wander away from the campsite. Good identification increases the odds that you will be reunited with your dog. One of the most common forms of identification is a dog tag. These can be easily printed at pet stores and attached to your dog's harness or collar. These tags should, at minimum, include your name and phone number. Bonus points if you have your address as well. This form of ID is cheap, easy to attach, and you can get creative with it. The other option for identifying your pet is a microchip. A microchip is a small device that is about the size of a grain of rice. It is injected into your pet's scruff area by a veterinarian. Microchips can be scanned by special scanners available at shelters and veterinary hospitals. Each microchip has a unique number that's linked to your pet. This number can then be looked up in a database to find which company manufactured the chip. If your pet is lost, by scanning the chip, we can figure out which company to call to get the owner's information. This brings us to an extremely important point. Make sure that your personal information is up to date for your pet's microchip. 
As a vet, I've unfortunately seen many lost pets come into the clinic with microchips that either have out-of-date information or it hasn't been registered at all. In these cases, we don't have an easy way to reunite the pet with their owner. The most common time to microchip pets is when they are spayed or neutered. The microchip is injected with a rather large needle, so it can be nice to do while your pet's already asleep. However, if this wasn't done, you can still get your pet microchipped, as most dogs and cats tolerate the poke fairly well. If that isn't enough to convince you to get a microchip for your pet, a 2009 study showed that lost dogs without a microchip were reunited with their owners only about 21% of the time, while dogs with a microchip were reunited about 52% of the time. This means that a microchip over doubled the chances that owners were reunited with their lost dogs. If you travel frequently with your pet, I strongly recommend having both forms of ID. You can have a pet microchipped and also attach a dog tag for easy access. On the road, it's better to be safe than sorry. For more information about traveling safely with your pets, visit arvingtoday.tv. Tune in next time for more pet health information. I'm Dr. Fitz. Thanks for watching Paws on Board. Someone once said, the camping doesn't really start until the RV awning comes out. Whoever said that really knew what they were talking about. Carefree of Colorado, celebrating 45 years of RV awning innovation. For more information, visit our website at carefreeofcolorado.com. you have a Truma Aquago instant hot water system, you can expect to make a lot of new friends. It doesn't matter if you own a motorhome or small teardrop trailer, everyone can use more power. With that in mind, together with our friends at Go Power, we're holding a Get Powered Up contest with a grand prize everyone could use. A Go Power DuraCube 500 Watt Portable Power Station, paired up with a 100 Watt Duralite Expansion Solar Panel. Along with the grand prize, we're also giving away five Durapack 8 Watt Solar Portable Power Packs, one each week for five weeks. To learn more about the contest and prizes and how to enter, visit our website at rvingtoday.tv. RVing Today is powered by Go Power. Hi everyone, I'm Kate Dunbar, the Campground Gourmet for Rolling on TV. Today I'm showing you how to make a delicious and flavorful Southwestern Cedar Plank Salmon Meal. We're prepping it in the kitchen and taking it out on the grill in a few minutes, so let's get to the ingredients. I have two salmon fillets here. I have green and yellow bell pepper that I've thin sliced in long strips. I have some onion and I have some sliced garlic. I've made up a southwestern seasoning mix with two teaspoons of kosher salt, two teaspoons of black pepper, one teaspoon of chili powder, and one teaspoon of ground cumin. All you have to do is shake it together and place it in a bowl. I also have some chopped cilantro and I've included using the stems too because they have a tremendous amount of flavor. And we've got a little bit of olive oil. Let's get this together. First, I wanna season my salmon. I'm gonna take the olive oil and just drizzle about a teaspoon or two over each fillet here. And you just wanna rub it in starting to turn it over it is skin on and that's perfect all right now with your clean hand your non-oily hand hold your hand up high sprinkle the southwestern seasoning liberally over your fish because you want it to get all over and that ground cumin is going to give it such a rich smoky flavor that's traditional in any southwestern cooking all right let's get the sides Perfect. You don't want to miss any spots. You don't need to season the skin unless if you're someone who does eat salmon skin. There are a couple of you that do and some of you who don't, so it's fine. Now, I'm gonna push that up to the front 
we're gonna bring over our cedar plank. Now, I've soaked this in water for about 30 minutes and it's ready to go. But we're gonna build a bed on here that the salmon is going to sit on. So as the salmon cooks and releases its beautiful flavors, it's gonna do that right into the vegetables. And then once the, the cedar wood starts to smoke, it's gonna perfume the onions, the bell pepper, and especially that salmon. So the easiest way to do this is take some of your bell peppers, just place them on there. Take some of your onions, place those on there, and then do another little layer in the opposite direction, just so everything stays on your cedar plank here. One more layer of onion, do that around the side and the center, and just kind of mound it together, build it all there, and then press down. Now take your sliced garlic and add it all around. There we go. Take your olive oil, just do a little drizzle over your vegetables. Just a little, maybe a teaspoon or two. Okay, now you're gonna take your Southwestern seasoning and you're gonna dust all the vegetables with it because you want them to have the same flavor that the salmon's gonna have. Maybe, quarter teaspoon, half a teaspoon at the most. All right, let's push this off to the side. We're done here. We're gonna take a little bit of that cilantro, sprinkle it over the top of the vegetable bed. Now we're gonna bring back our salmon. Let's place these right on top here. Make certain to press it down so you know it's making contact with the vegetables. It's not gonna fall off. Take a little bit of that cilantro, go over the top, and again all over the vegetables. All right, we're ready to go take this outside to the grill. Okay, here we are. My grill is set up where I have some nice hot coals. There aren't any flames, and that's the trick when you're cooking with cedar. You don't want flames licking the bottom of this and starting it to char. You just want it to smolder for the heat. So if you're at the campground, you wanna make certain that you're above the heat by about at least six inches. That ground is really, really hot, and all those coals are too. You just kinda wanna lay them down, press them down so they're not just peeking right underneath that cedar plank. Let's take this. Careful not to spill anything. And I'm gonna place it right on the grill, put the lid on, and I'm gonna make certain that the holes are right over that salmon. So as the air draws in from down underneath the grill, it's going across the salmon and out the vent. This should take about 12 minutes. All right, it's been about 12 minutes. Let's take a peek at our salmon and see if it's ready. Oh, it's perfect. I can see the white on here. It started to get nice and toasty. Let me grab a bell pepper really quick. Mm, it's got a great crunch, but it's perfectly cooked nice and warm all the way through. I think this is finished. So let me put this lid down. Let me grab a set of tongs and let's see if I can lift this on one piece without spilling anything. I'm going to have the side of the barbecue help me out here. All right, well, here we are at our table. Our salmon is finished. I've poured myself a really nice glass of Pinot Grigio, which will go perfect with all those warm spices, the cumin, the pepper, and the chili powder. And then I've got the onions, the bell pepper, and the garlic, and especially the fresh cilantro. Well, no better way than just to dig in and give it a try. Oh, that salmon looks perfect. All right, a couple vegetables. All right, let's give it a taste. Oh, that salmon just flakes right off perfectly. Mm. That cedar smoke has just permeated the entire piece of salmon. It's beautiful and it works so well with the ground cumin and its smokiness. It's the perfect complement. Now, I know I already tried the vegetables over there at the grill, but I just wanna try them again because there's nothing better then a perfectly smoked bell pepper that still has a little bit of bite to it and isn't mushy, and that's exactly what these are. Mmm, perfect. 
This is the way to eat when you're at the campground. I'm Kate Dunbar, the Campground Gourmet. I'll see you at the campfire. For more information on anything you saw in this week's episode, visit our website at rvingtoday.tv. This has been another fun production.